Welcome everyone to History Gone Wilder, part of Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and this video is going to be different in a sense than what I normally talk about with military history. Although the Battle of Antietam was the single bloodiest day in American history, its long-term ramifications for the community of Sharpsburg, Maryland get little attention, but it is just as drastic. On September 17, 1862, the Army of Northern Virginia and the Army of the Potomac slugged it out along Antietam Creek outside the town of Sharpsburg, Maryland. It resulted in the bloodiest single day in American history, with casualties soaring to around 23,000. The pivotal moments like the cornfield, the sunken road, and Burnside's Bridge are etched into military history, but what happened afterward? For two days in September, Sharpsburg's population exceeded that of Chicago, Illinois, with those two armies camped out in its vicinity. Well over a hundred thousand soldiers and their animals inhabited the small town, and the two armies' mere presence created horrendous lasting effects. Some residents escaped before the battle took place, and when they returned to their homes, they found that any food they stored away, like jams, jellies, cornmeal, and produce, had been consumed by ravenous soldiers. One family returned to find that soldiers had killed dozens of chickens in their abandoned kitchen, leaving heads and entrails ankle deep on the floor. Other families found hogs and cattle butchered and fences dismantled to be used as firewood. Even after the Confederate Army left, around 50,000 Union soldiers stayed in the area for about a month and a half after the battle. Health hazards from over 100,000 soldiers relieving themselves for two days and those 50,000 Union soldiers doing so in the month and a half that followed created long-lasting health effects for the citizens of Sharpsburg. One citizen remembered that after several days, he could still track the movements of Lee's men by the thickly strewn belt of green corn husks and cobs and the ribbon of dysenteric stools just behind. On October 1st, the Union Army cared for over 20,000 horses and 10,000 mules at Sharpsburg. At the lowest estimate, each animal produced 35 pounds of manure and 4 gallons of urine per day. This means that the animals left at least 575 tons of solid waste and more than 130,000 gallons of liquid effluent on the landscape around Sharpsburg every day. Add on to that the mismanagement of waste disposal that thousands of bodies and body parts needed to be buried and many times citizens took on that responsibility. For the dead animals, many poured lamp oil over them and set them ablaze to get rid of the carcasses, while others attempted to bury them. Decaying corpses along with the animal and human waste seeped into the groundwater, streams, and creeks that the citizens of Sharpsburg used for water. The people of Sharpsburg began to get horribly sick from typhoid fever and chronic dysentery, and it wasn't until a year later that the residents began to recover, but some still complained about problems attributed to the after effects of the battle for years to come. The battle ended, but the suffering did not stop. I have covered in at least two videos what happened to veterans after the war and the toll that wounds and sickness had on the old soldiers. But let us not forget about the civilians who suffered just as harshly in many instances when the war came knocking at their door and they were powerless to stop its impact on their lives. This type of situation did not just impact the people of Sharpsburg, Wherever communities encountered battles, these types of situations arose. After the Battle of Shiloh, the farmers' fields became useless because to plow a field meant the possibility of turning up bodies or unexploded ordnance. Plus, the added lead and iron in the soil made growing difficult. The trees, riddled with lead bullets and shrapnel, became useless for lumber, and putting a blade into a tree risked ruining the blade. As with Antietam, the dead bodies in the army's waste contributed to the ruining of the area's water supply. To learn more about this type of history, check out An Environmental History of the Civil War by Judkin Browning and Timothy Silver, as well as any other environmental history. It exposes a whole new dimension to the war that gets left out of military studies, but with environmental historians' help, we can create a more holistic picture of the conflict and understand its long-lasting effects on the people and the culture. 